Hey everyone, how's it going? Kermode here, back with another video. In this video, I wanna show you guys five ways you can make sounds punchier. Before we get into the video, I do wanna say I've got a remix contest going on for my track Chameleon. If you wanna participate, I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description. And if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please do, it helps more than you guys know. Without further ado though, let's dive right into the video. So we're gonna talk about a few ways to make your sounds punchier. We've got a pretty soft kick here. First and foremost, one thing I wanna show you guys is actually dealing with the pitch envelope. I think a lot of people think punch purely has to do with volume. Personally, I think it actually has a lot to do with the actual pitch of the sound. Now this sound actually does have a pretty good pitch envelope to it in the beginning, but let me just show you anyway. So we have our sound here in sampler. Now watch what happens as we increase the pitch in the pitch envelope. Check that out. So what you want to play with is both pitch and the decay time to really change the front of that sample. If it's too slow, it's never really going to reach its original pitch. If it's too quick, it kind of just creates a click. So it's a really fine balance between the two to really dial in a punch that you like for your sample. Next up is actually using compression. But when we use compression, what we wanna do is actually compress the body of the sound and not to the initial transient. So what do I mean by that? So what we're gonna do is we wanna use this compressor to compress the body so this gets turned up. So to do that, what you do is you compress the sound, get the ratio, get the release the way you like, and then play with the attack until the transient makes it through. Once you have that the way you like, simply freeze the track, flatten it, and then compensate by turning up the volume the way you want. You can see things are a lot more balanced now and look a lot more like how a kick drum is supposed to. Opposite to that, you could also use expansion, where expansion, what we wanna do is we wanna grab that first amount of punch and actually have that increase. And that can really help the punch. Be careful though, if a sound like this doesn't have too much dynamic between the first part and the second part, it may not work, but it works well with samples that would look a little something like this, where you can kind of grab onto just the transient. Then you can expand that transient even further. And make that first hit that little bit punchier. Similar to that, Next up is separating the transient and the body of the sample. So to do that, what you wanna do is you wanna use a gate to isolate just the transient. In a situation like this, where the transient and the tail are pretty similar in dynamic, what you can actually do is open up the side chain, open up this window here and work with the EQ so it's being triggered based off the highs. There we go, that makes it a lot easier to isolate that. So now that we have just the transient of the sample, we can group this, we can duplicate it, and if we hit this flip button here, now this is just the body. Combined, you get the original sample, but what's really cool is now we can turn up that transient section to taste or even process it separately. For example, you could add a little bit of distortion just to the transient. just give that and give that front end that little bit extra bite 
And then lastly, this has more to do in the context of a track with say a percussion loop or the interplay between bass patterns, for example. So let me grab a perk loop. We have a perk loop here. And this technique is less about making things punchy and more about creating space for the perception of punch. And what that is, is creating gaps of air before sounds actually hit. So what do I mean by that? Is what you wanna do is you wanna chop anytime some sort of sound happens. And I do this a lot in my mixes with basses actually. I'll cut basses. And we'll just do it with half the loop here. And if you create little fades right before, these little gaps of air give more give this little break to your ears so that when the next sound hits it has that much more impact to it not only that but it allows effects but it allows transient effects like we were using before to actually be more reactive You can even take this to the extreme, though I don't recommend it always, where you do full fades between each sound. Making your sound more dynamic and thus technically more punchy because there's more loudness to quiet ratio. Now I prefer manual edits because you can do get more control, but you can also turn on the warp mode go to the transient beat mode in forward forward stop mode, tighten up the volume envelope so each time it reads a transient, it does that automatically and adds a little volume envelope. Which technically makes your sound more dynamic, thus punchier. So there we go guys, you can apply this to drums, bass, melodic things, really anything, any of these techniques can help you achieve a punchier sound. So I hope you got a lot out of this video. Once again, head to the description of this video. I've got a remix contest going on and I wanna hear what you can do with it. So thanks guys, I'm Kermode. I'll be back soon with another video. Peace.